Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, admin evangelist, and this is How I Solve This. Ever write a super complex but awesome formula just to find out you can't save it because it's just too darn big? Well, in today's episode, Salesforce MVP Michael Kalodner shows us how admins can work around the dreaded formula compile error. Today, I'm with Michael Kalodner, independent nonprofit Salesforce consultant, a Salesforce MVP, and a returning guest. Hello, Michael. Welcome to How I Solve This. Hey, Jen. Thank you. It's great to be back. So I'm always interested in learning about everyone's Salesforce journey because all paths are different. Can you share with us a little bit about yourself and your Salesforce journey? Absolutely. Like many people, I was an accidental admin to start. Mm -hmm. Um, Here's my trailblazer journey. I started uh, after I came back to the work world from being a stay-at-home dad. I was working at a small nonprofit that needed CRM. And as the, you know, young kid in the office who liked technology, I sort of got the job of exploring the options and came upon this Salesforce thing, which sounded good. Um, And after we implemented, I started playing around and really got excited when I asked questions on the community, um, how generous people were with their time and their wisdom. Um, So I kept asking questions. I eventually took on more and more administrative duties on our Salesforce instance and eventually decided I wanted to look for a job uh, full-time as an administrator. Got a job with a small nonprofit, started attending community events and open source sprints and Dreamforce, and eventually became an independent consultant. And here I am. So you talked about the community. Um, Tell me a little bit more about how your involved in it? Well, my biggest involvement is through the nonprofit community on the Power of Us Hub and the open source community sprints, which are amazing events where nonprofit Salesforce folk get together, uh, admins, developers, Salesforce employees, users, and we work to solve problems that are common to nonprofits. We build, um, occasionally we build packages, we we write documentation, Um, we build resources that can be put out there for the community to use. All right. And and you have to tell me about this T-Rex mascot because I've seen Twitter pictures of the nonprofit sprint, but I don't really know what this T-Rex thing is doing in there. (laughs) Absolutely. So you can see Sprinty. Sprinty is the T-Rex, the official, yes, official mascot of the open source sprints. Uh, Sprinty shows up at the open source sprint events and um, motivates everyone, gives hugs, and is our um, friend in the Salesforce world. Awesome. All right, so let's get down to business. Please share with us the business problem you're trying to solve. Absolutely. So I think we've probably all run into this at some point as admins. You're working on a formula field and you write out your whole formula, you've thought through your nested if statements, you're all excited that this is gonna work maybe on the first try. So you go to save and you get that dreaded formula compile error. Here we can see what happens. This formula is too big. So the question is, what are you gonna do about it? So step one, is always to try to rewrite the formula so it uses fewer characters. Now, spoiler alert, it's not gonna work in this case because the formula relies on this underlying field that's simply too big. Mm -hmm. But I've made a a slightly uh, changed field here so I can at least show that if I take this formula, which is three, nested if statements, I can actually change it. If I just hit cancel, I'll go back to its original version. I can actually change this formula to be a case formula instead of nested ifs. And if we do check syntax on this, you can see that it has shrunk significantly. So we've done a lot of, we've made a lot of progress here by changing the formula. However, you can't always get there in, the, in, in such an easy way. So 
after working on this formula for a while, what I realized was I wasn't going to be able to shrink the formula because the underlying field that this formula is looking at was simply too big. So in this case, what I needed to do was change the underlying field, which was itself a fairly complicated formula. And I simply got rid of it being a formula field at all. I had an underlying field whose formula was fairly large. It included a date comparison and eventually some rounding. So instead of making a formula field, I built myself a record triggered flow that runs every time a record is created or updated and it runs before save, so it's super fast. And then I just used that exact same formula. It's a one-step flow. It triggers itself and then it updates that record with the formula that was exactly the formula I originally wanted to have in the field itself. Great, and that's it. And that's it. Super wow. simple. <laughs> <laughs> Takes longer to explain the problem than the solution. So how long did it take you to figure out I could do this with a simple flow and solve the problem? Well, you know, the, <laughs> the issue isn't figuring out that the flow is the answer. The issue is poking around at the formula to figure out if you really have to do the flow. Of course, I spent a little bit of time trying to tighten up the formula or the underlying fields formula and work with both of those fields to see if I could get it closer and closer to the character limit. But it was pretty clear early on that I was so far beyond the character limit, mm -hmm. I started to realize I wasn't gonna be able to solve it that way. And then it was time to look at uh, automation instead. Um, a quick Google search turns up some recommendations about building a workflow rule, but of course, workflow rules are the past and flow is the future. So I immediately started looking at building a record triggered flow. And as you can see, it's a really easy flow to build. It yeah, took it, almost yeah, it's not time. any simpler than like a one step. <laughs> it's, flow right. element. it's literally one step. You have to change your formula slightly because the format is different in a flow than the format is in a formula field, but it's the same basic formula. It's just the syntax for the field references, um, which you can, of course, just insert using the, the field updater. So it, it became clear fairly early on that I just needed to build this as a flow and be able to move on and not worry that if I wanted to reference this field or other or the fields that are based on it in formulas in the future, they were also going to fail if I was close to the line. This got me far from the line. Well, I loved how you creatively use Flow as a way to work around that formula compile error that I know many admins writing large formulas have run into. So thank you so much, Michael, for sharing this and being a returning guest on How I Solve This. Thank you, Jen. It was great to be here and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. You just saw Maiko demo how he creatively worked around the formula compile error by building a very simple record triggered flow. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com or also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you never miss another episode of How I Solve This. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome admin.